If you or a loved one is a chronic resident of the internet, you may be entitled to financial compensation. This is a public service announcement from the FDA. You may have been exposed to a certain Zootopia fanfiction comic. You know the one. Side effects include anxiety, depression, losing faith in humanity, maybe considering becoming a furry. But that's not what we're here to talk about today. Boom! You guys thought I was gonna copy Papa Meat and do a video on the Zootopia abortion comic. Wrong! This is not the first time that society has interwoven political ideas into comics for children. I'm here today to talk about a different comic strip like that. At least, I feel like that. You guys know I've been heavy into Dungeons and Dragons. You guys know I've been heavy into Dungeons and Dragons lately, so today we're going to be talking about some dark dungeons. So basically, when it comes down to it, everybody knows that Dungeons and Dragons caused some satanic panic back in the 80s and 90s. Well, there was an author named Jack Chick. First of all, let's talk about that. Jack Chick. What a name. It just feels like there's something missing. Also, it's giving very... Jack Chick was... is... maybe he's still alive? No. He passed away in 2016. Jack Chick was an American author and cartoonist who wrote very Christianized uh, booklets called Chick Tracts and basically um, made little kids sign contracts saying that they would do what the little booklet said. And I guess, I mean, even though contracts signed by minors are not legally binding, I guess there was a pretty good, like, concept behind it. Like, the, like, the dare people, like, oh, don't do drugs, or, hey, don't summon demons, or, you know, whatever. That's fine. I don't want my child summoning a demon. Jack Chick wrote some pretty mysterious and infamous material. There are like pyramid scheme church ladies on here who are still selling these books even though they're super outdated and kind of racist actually. View all. View all. Okay. Okay. Whoa! There's a lot of options here. Native Americans? What? What about that is wrong? Whoa! Okay. Ignore that that was on there. I don't condone this behavior. <laughs> Moving onward. He had some pretty odd takes on pop culture things of the time. So being the religious and very wise oracle that he was, he wrote a comic called Dark Dungeons to discourage children of playing Dungeons and Dragons and teach them about how demonic and satanic it is. So today we're gonna read it, and I'm gonna react to it. Keep watching if you're interested in that. It was very generous of him in the, the Holy Spirit to make these free to read. He's not profiting from these that I know of unless you order the tiny little ones for trick or treating, because all kids love reading these. But yeah, all of his comics are on these websites, and so we're gonna get started, and we are going to get into some dark dungeons not that kind not that kind of dark dungeon that's not what we're getting into not today i also am going to be doing voices for all of these characters so okay so we have a um sexy goth m mommy girlfriend over here um okay i've got to get into character <clears throat> okay wizard cast your spell okay dungeon master my spell of light blinds the monster! The thief, Blackleaf, did not find the poison trap. I declare her dead. No! Not Blackleaf! No! No! I'm going to die! They're taking this very seriously. Don't make me quit the game! Please don't! Somebody please save me! You can't do this! Marcy, get out of here! You're dead! You don't exist anymore! You don't even exist to me! Debbie, your cleric has been raised to the 8th level. I think it's time that you really learn how to cast spells. You mean, you're gonna teach me how to have the real power? Yes, you have the personality for it. Now. Is there a comma there or is there shit on my screen? Yeah. Now. The intense occult training through D&D &D prepared Debbie to accept the invitation to enter a witch's coven. 
I've brought Elfstar to become a priestess and witch. Welcome, Elfstar. Now you will become a priestess of the craft and of the Temple of Diana. How do I apply to the Temple of Diana? Miss Frost, this is fantastic. This makes the game real. It's not fantasy anymore. Last night, I cast my first spell. This is real power. <laughs> The way that they're framing it to be like real power, like playing D and D is going to unlock some arcane energy, is so funny. Okay, <laughs> I knew you were ready by the way you played the game, but this is just the beginning. There is so much more. Which spell did you cast, Debbie? I used the mind bondage spell on my father. He was trying to stop me from playing D and D. And what was the result? He just bought me $200 worth of new D&D figures and manuals. It was great! <laughs> okay, we are now using Dungeons & Dragons to mind control people to buy more D&D stuff. Actually, Wizards of the Coast kind of already does that. I'm on to you, cheeky bastard. This is... Okay, this is bizarre. Later that week, who's talking? Hey Debbie, Marcy's on the phone. She wants to talk to you. She's really upset. I can't, I'm fighting the zombie. Tell her I'll see her tonight. What zombie is she fighting? The DM is on the phone with, with Marcy. Okay, the girl from the beginning. Elfstar, I think, or Blackleaf, my bad, Blackleaf. There's a lot of lore here, okay? Keep up with the, the Dark Dungeons lore with me. The DM is on the phone, and the girl, who's the player, is fighting a zombie. What zombie is she fighting? This man has never played D&D in his life. Not that I would expect him to, but like, it's just funny <laughs> that she cannot be fighting anything if no one else is at the table. Also, is she just at some random house of some random woman, like, why? Hi, Miss Anderson. Marcy wanted me to see her tonight. I'm glad you're here, Debbie. Marcy has shut herself in her room and won't come out. She's, she hasn't been herself for weeks. I've been very worried. Ever since her character in the game got killed, it's though a part of her died. Maybe you can talk some sense into her. I don't want to say I know where this is going, but I know where this is going. I'm not going to voice that over. This feels disrespectful. It's my fault Blackleaf dived. I can't face life alone. <laughs> oh my god. I'm so sorry. This is... Part of me knows that this is inspired by an actual story. But the way they're spinning it is so not true. It has not, no, that is not how it happened. Okay, so her friend just died. She couldn't deal with the guilt. And so she goes back to Miss Frost's house, who is the dungeon master, and says, Miss Frost, I can't get Marcy out of my mind. How could she do something like this? If I'd left the game, she'd be alive today. Miss Frost is not having it. Miss Frost says, Get your priorities straight, Debbie. Your spiritual growth through this game is more important than some lousy loser's life. Oh my god. Is this her teacher? She's calling her Miss Frost. Is this like one of her teachers at school? You're playing D&D &D with your teacher and your friend does it. And your teacher's just like, get yourself together. Get yourself together. This is crazy. This is insane. It would have happened sooner or later. Her spirit was too weak. But the law of our faith that we can do anything as long as we harm no one. What the f did that just say? But the law of our faith is that we can do anything we want as long as we harm no one. But now we have harmed Marcy. And now she's thinking this. What have I gotten myself into? You gotta distort the voice a little bit to let them know it's in your head. Don't be stupid, Debbie! I think you'd be... <laughs> I'm illiterate. I think you'd better let Elfstar take care of things. You're getting out of control! You look out of control. You look... You look crazy. 
You look cuckoo. You look like you forgot to take your prescription candy this morning. I don't want to be Elf Star anymore. I want to be Debbie. Okay, where are we at now? We are now outside. I guess she ran away. Hey, Debbie. What's wrong? Can I help? I thought I had all the answers, Mike. But now everything is falling apart. Sob. <laughs> they they didn't they didn't denote that it's like an asterisk or anything, so I just imagine she's like literally like Sob <laughs> Debbie, I told you Jesus is the only answer. I've been praying and fasting for you. Mike is a skinny legend. Mike has been fasting for Debbie, okay? Mike Mike is like So you think I'm skinny? Mike is literally a skinny legend for Debbie. Why would you do that for me? Because I know what you're involved in. It's a spiritual warfare that you can't win without the Lord Jesus. I want to denote that there's nothing wrong with Christianity. It's just when you make up lies about a game, it's clear you've never even played it because none of this even happens in a D&D. Like, this is not even how you play. But it's just it's just the blatant lies about the game. Moving on. What can I do? Come with me to a meeting this afternoon. The speaker came out of witchcraft and he knows what you're up against. There's just a whole cult of people practicing witchcraft in this town. That afternoon, you who were involved in the occult think you have achieved power, but you have been trapped in a dungeon of bondage. Okay, I told you guys, no, no, no. Psst, 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 psst. <laughs> the limited power you have been given is only bait to lure your destruction. This is a lot of preaching. I'm gonna see if there's anything funny in here. Okay, there is. According to Acts 1919, you should gather up all of your occult paraphernalia, like your rock music. Okay, what about Skillet? What about Skillet? Okay. What about Christian rock music? What about them? Your rock music, occult books, charms, dark dungeons material. So that is the canon name of D&D in this world, is dark dungeons. In case you haven't caught on. Don't throw them away! Burn them! That's right, guys. America is a free country, but we love burning literature. We love setting it all on fire. <laughs> It's so real. It's not even funny because it's real. Okay, so is that Debbie? Is Debbie coming forward? Okay, so she's free. Look, look, the little ghost guy. What is that? Is that, can we tell if that's like an elf or something? Hang on. Looks like a horse. I don't know what it is. If anybody knows what that little miscellaneous shape is, drop it and comment. But it's, it's leaving her body. It's gone. She is free. She has left one strange older adult for another strange older adult. I'm, I'm starting to sense a pattern here, Debbie. Maybe just don't hang out with weird older adults. Maybe hang out with some friends your own age. Because even Mike, even good old Mikey boy up here, where are you at, Mike? Even Mike looks way older than you, your little pigtail clad self, Debbie, Deborah. Mike looks way older than you. You need to hang out with friends your own age. That's why you're having this issue. So these are called chick tracks. Chick tracks, chick tracks. Say that three times fast. Chick track, chick track, chick track, chick track. Um, anyway, their track samplers are available. You can buy them for $10. I... Did you guys hear that? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I kiss my dog. If you guys don't kiss your dogs, you don't love your dogs. So, that was a fun little adventure to a website that I find hard to believe still exists, considering it's super outdated and strange, um, and kind of offensive. <laughs> yeah, so fear-mongering that D&D &D was evil was a very r real thing. 
was a very real thing in the 1980s and 90s. It was called Satanic Panic. Um, I do have a video about why D&D is cool again that explains a lot of it and goes into a lot of the details about what happened there and why people thought that. I'll try to link it as a related video as a card on the end of this video. But um, I hope you enjoyed my little rendition of reading all of the parts. This is like when Trisha Paytas did every single part in Beetlejuice. Dude, that was gross. How many times have you licked your bum bum hole today? Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. This um, was fun, and if there's any more weird comics, I would be happy to read them, as long as they're not the racist ones on Jack Chick's website, so. You've been watching Melody Ever After. I am a pop culture video essay and commentary channel. I like to talk about things like TTRPGs, movies, gaming, etc. So if you're into geeky stuff like that, I would really appreciate it if you checked me out. Until next time.